Okay, we're talking about differentiating logarithmic functions. And earlier we said this. The derivative of the natural log function is 1 over x. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Now what we want to do is this. Find the derivative of a base b logarithm of x. What is that? And b can be any number. So we want to differentiate base b logarithms. And to do this, we need to remember the change of base rule for logarithms. Change of base rule. And the change of base rule is this. If you have log base b of a, that's equal to the natural log of a over the natural log of b. Or you could say this. You could say the log base b of a is equal to the base 10 log of a over the base 10 log of b. And what this does, this allows us to compute, for example, on the calculator, logs of any base. Our calculator will do natural base or base e logs, and it will do base 10 logs or common logs, but it won't do logs of any other base, say base 3 or base 5.2 or something like that. But we can always take a log expressed in any base and express it in terms of a natural log or a common log using this formula, this change of base rule. And we're going to use this to differentiate a base b exponent. And here we go. I want to find the derivative with respect to x of log base b of x. Well, that's going to be the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of x over the natural log of b. Because log base b of x is ln of x over ln of b by the change of base rule. Now, b is just a number. So the natural log of b is a constant. So what I have right here is 1 over the natural log of b, but that's just a constant. So it can come outside of my derivative. So I'm going to write it out here. 1 over the natural log of b times the derivative of the natural log of x. And this, the derivative of the natural log function, is something we know. This is what we learned earlier. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So there we have it. We're pretty much done. I have 1 over the natural log of b times this, which is just 1 over x. And that's commonly written like this, 1 over x ln b. And so there you have it. If you want to sum it up, you can say the derivative with respect to x of log base b of x is equal to 1 over x ln b. Now let's come back to our reference page and fill that in. So the derivative of base b logarithm, and here it is here, the derivative of log base b of x is 1 over x times the natural log of b. Okay, now let's do a few examples with this concept. Here we're told to differentiate y equals log base 5 of x. Well, we just apply that idea. This is going to be 1 over x times the natural log of 5. And that's it. Pretty simple. Let's do another one. What if we were told, uh, this one we're, we're told, f of x is equal to log base 8 of 5x. What's the derivative? Well, f prime of x is going to be 1 over 5x times the natural log of 8. And then this 5x is really my inner function here inside my logarithm. So I need to apply the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of that, which is just 5. So this is times 5. And those 5's cancel. And I'm left with 1 over x ln 8. I'll do another example here. Suppose you were told f of x is equal to log base 5 of sine x. Find the derivative. Well, f prime of x would be 
1 over this times the natural log of 5. So I'll write that 1 over sine x times the natural log of 5. And then again, sine x is our inner function. So we need to multiply by the derivative of that according to the chain rule. And so that's cosine x. And that's our answer. And we could simplify this cosine x over sine x into a cotangent. So if you wanted to, you could write this as cotangent x over the natural log of 5. Either of those answers would be correct. Just recognize that both of those are equivalent. Here's another example. We're told to differentiate y equals 4 log base e of x to the 7th. And I'm going to work this a couple of different ways. The first is just a straightforward application of the formula for differentiating a logarithm. The 4, remember, stays out here as a constant multiplier. So y primed will equal 4 times. And then this is going to be 1 over x to the 7th. And then also down here in the denominator, we need to have a log base e, which is ln of e. Because log base e, remember, is just a natural log. And the ln of e, the natural log of e, is just 1. So this is just 1 over x to the 7th. But remember now, x to the 7th is our inner function, so we need to multiply by the derivative of x to the 7th by the chain rule. So this is going to be times 7x to the 6th. And the 7 and the 4 are going to combine to a 28. So this is going to be 28. And my x to the 6th up top and the x to the 7th down below will result in an x in the denominator. So 28 over x is the answer. Now sometimes problems like this can be made a little bit easier if you rewrite the problem remembering some of your properties of exponents and remember or excuse me remembering properties of logarithms. Remember that if you, if you have an exponent here in your logarithm it can pop out front as a multiplier. So I can take this original function here and write it as this y equals 28 times the log base e of x. And this 7 just came out front as a multiplier and got multiplied by the 4 to give me this 28. And log base e is just a natural log. So this is 28 times the natural log of x. And then I can take the derivative of that. y primed is going to be 28, right there, times the derivative of ln of x, which is just 1 over x. And it's pretty easy to see that that is equivalent to what we got earlier. I think this, this method is a little bit easier. And in general, that's one of the things that logarithms are useful for. They make things easier because they can do things like that. For example, changing an exponent into a multiplication.